for my earliest influences, I guess, were like artists like Josh White and Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Um, as I got older, I liked Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley. And then in um, probably 1957, I heard uh, music of Robert Johnson and Blind Boy Fuller, the country blues. And that really... Delta blues? Delta blues, yes. Well, Robert Johnson is the epitome of Delta blues. Okay. So this is what influenced, this is what inspired me to want to play the guitar myself when I heard the country blues. And so I would say that's my, my major influence. Okay. Hello. For me, talk me is a meeting with Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I met Jimi Hendrix in New York in 1966 in the summer he was uh, had been on tour with Curtis Knight and he was fired in New York and stranded. He had no money and somebody stole his guitar. He was hanging out in Greenwich Village and uh, he was jamming with a band at a place called the Cafe Wa. Uh, my friend Ben Applebaum came to the Gaslight Cafe where, where, where I was playing across the street from the Cafe Wa and said, you got to hear this guy playing. And I went across the street and I heard him and I, he just knocked me out. He was a great guitar player and very nice guy. Um, he told me his story and I felt really bad for him, you know, that he was stranded in New York and without, you know, a gig or anything. And he asked me if he, if he could, if I could do anything for him. So. I put a band together with him as the lead guitar player, and I got us a gig at, at the Cafe Ogogo on Bleecker Street. And we played there for a week, and everybody that was anybody in New York came to that show, and Jimmy just knocked their socks off. One of the guys in the audience was Chaz Chandler. Chaz Chandler offered Jimmy a plane ticket to London and a chance to record on his own. And I didn't see him for a year after that. He came back to New York, and we hung out a bit, and um, he was already a big star at that point. He was just, he was phenomenal. There was no way that guy, that guy would be anything but great. Do you have the, just um, a good memories for him? Absolutely the best. He was a, a wonderful person, and he was a phenomenal performer. He was a great musician and a, a nice person. Hello. Your best memory on stage? My best memory on stage? I've had so many great memories oh, oui, on stage. Oui. There are so many. It would be hard to pick one. Maybe my first performance at the Newport Folk Festival in 1963. I was on the stage with John Lee Hooker, Mississippi John Hurt, um, Reverend Gary Davis, Dave Van Ronk, and Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. It was the blues workshop, and I stole the show. Alors, do you have a new record? I have a new record out. It's called Ready for Love. It's on the uh, Back Porch label. Um, it was produced by David Hidalgo from Los Lobos and my wife Marla, who's sitting next to you. Nice to meet you. And it uh, features um, on the keyboards is Augie Myers, mm -hmm. on the uh, drums is Stephen Hodges, on guitars are David Hidalgo and Frank Carrillo, and um, on the bass is Marty Ballou, mm -hmm. and on the fiddle is Susie Tyrell. Yeah. Hello. You have a dad, he's like a great producer. <laughs> what did you prefer, play the blues of the world, so that you take over the business? I'm sorry? <laughs> you have the dad as a producer. My father uh, was a producer of jazz and yeah. rock and roll and blues and just about everything. And um, I think most people who know about jazz and blues and stuff have heard of my father. He was a very fa famous man. He, uh, Johnny uh, Winter? Not Johnny Winter, no. You, you know who he discovered? He, he, he discovered Count Basie and Benny Goodman, Lester Young, Charlie Christian, Mead Lux Lewis, and Albert Ammons. Um, 
Teddy Wilson. Um, okay, Joe Jones, drummer. Um, later on, I mean, he put the, the band together for Benny Goodman, as I said, who was my uncle. He, um, he went on to, d to discover George Benson, Aretha Franklin, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. This is a great, great <laughs> history, huh? <laughs> and, uh, alors, what do you, what, no, what are your project this year? This year I will make another record for the Back Porch label. Mm -hmm. We haven't started work on it or I haven't really conceived it yet, but that will happen this year sometime. It will be my, my 30th record. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have uh, the, the come on there, tour, American tour? I'm on tour 12 months a year. <laughs> Always. So I have a great agency and I, I work all the time. Okay. But John, thank you. Hey, internaute de Mazal TV, vous saurez que John a un nouvel album. It's a new album. Yeah, the new album is ready for love. <laughs> yeah, don't have. Don't, oh, don't have. No. no. <laughs> Alors, ça sera pour la prochaine fois. Hein? En, pour internaute de Mazal TV, bah, vous avez une légende du blues. Parce que ce soir, il joue son dernier concert au New Morning. Et je peux vous dire que tout seul, en acoustique, c'est un grand, grand monsieur. Je l'ai assez vu au New Morning pour vous dire que c'est une grande personne. Et je suis très fier de le rencontrer et de le revoir. Ce Merci, Jean-Paul. See you next, John. It's possible. Can you say?